Okay, let's uh, let's get started then, team. So, I think what we said the the fun place to start will be asking each of you to just tell us a little bit about how it is that you came to be interested in in the feminine. Say, what is the the story that? brings you here and perhaps some of the ideas that you've been working with or exploring to date and I leave it open to whoever wants to go for I can start. Hmm. Not really sure what what to say, but I'll start speaking and then see. Hmm. Thank you for that, Louisa. I'm feeling the slight nervousness leaving my body, and uh, yeah, feel um, yeah, it feels very precious to be here uh, in this space. Uh, so. Yeah, thank you, Owen, for inviting me. Mm. So, yeah, my journey with the feminine, I, uh, mm, I make it start in, in many different places, but to start somewhere, I, I was very, uh, during my time at university, I was very like concerned with the world, I guess. And uh, once I graduated, I was on this uh, saving the world mission. Mm. <laughs> that was very, uh, I put a lot of energy into that. Mm. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, it, was, it was a lot of really, really pushing myself, trying, uh, yeah. To, yeah, kind of take on and fix like the, the big problems I was seeing in the world. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I was, um, I was engaging in, in like deep intellectual spaces around that and act, but maybe not super classical activist spaces, but still, yeah, people really trying really hard to do good stuff for the world. Um, and uh, for a lot of different reasons in my life, I came to a place where I was quite, uh, became quite tired. And I was at Bali uh, and just had this huge realization that um, a lot of my like drive to try to fix the world was coming out of fear. Um, and yeah, uh, and, and also kind of that I thought I had to kind of change the world so that I could be in it, uh, does that make sense? Uh, and then I just realized, like, I, I really don't, like, I'm here now, like, yeah, it's hard to explain, but it was really like this big, like, weight was lifted off my shoulders. Um, and I just felt strongly that, like, I just wanted to move back to Sweden to my friends. Uh, I was living abroad at the time, uh, get a job where I would be paid really well uh, and to dance. Uh, that was like my my intention so I did that and and I'd known Louisa uh, for a couple of years at that time and uh, yeah during this time she asked me if I wanted to uh, to take a course uh, she was um, holding at the time called Divine Eros and Pussy Power now it's called Awakening Feminine Leadership uh, and I have no idea why I said yes to that like I hadn't really um I'd been quite androgynous and I hadn't really been thinking about feminine and masculine that much. And I was quite not, I was quite disconnected from my body, not super disconnected. Like I, I really don't know why I said yes, but for some reason I said yes. Um, and the energy in that course like blew my system. Like it was, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it's really hard to put words on, but I, yeah, I was really touched deeply, and 
and and it, I, it was kind of this this sense of when you when you have this feeling of like everything that I've done up till now is so that I can do this, um, and um, uh, yeah, uh, I was just so touched by by this quality of the feminine that was kind of it, like that I came in touch with through through Louise's work, um, and of course you know like it was um, yeah. Also, also other things but yeah just really coming back to my body coming back to my sexuality um and it was and, and like the the paradoxical thing was that like i i had to like let go of this thing of like trying to save the world but then when i came in touch with this like feminine force field i was like whoa like this this is what the world needs uh you know in in collaboration with the masculine and and you know that's why we're in this space and we need to do it together but like um, yeah, it, it feels really, you know, quite funny, or I don't know if that's right, but like, you know, how life is like, I had to let go of that idea for life to show me what like, uh, um, uh, yeah, and then, you know, kind of like, Louise has this term, she talks about going from burnt out idealists to turned on pragmatics, and that I feel that like, describes me so well. Um, yeah, and, and that was five years ago. I started inviting all my friends to the course, and I think all my female friends have taken Louise's course, and we just have this amazing field of just like pussy power, feminine women who are just like, and it's just the most amazing space to be in. Uh, and yeah, I was uh, uh, like, after I took the course, I um, uh, was um, hired on the management team of this big company. So I've been playing with this in, in the business world and it's amazing. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I just feel like personally, it's this 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 feminine being in this, this feminine power and embodiment is just the most, uh, it's, it's, like, it's like life has gone from black and white to color. Like it's, it's just the most amazing state of being. I love being around women in that state. Uh, I love playing with men in that polarity, like being, I was, I was talking before to Owen and Eskil about like being seen in that space is, yeah, amazing. I think I'm gonna stop talking now, but um, yeah. And, and also like as an add-on, I see that like, you know, the kind of the dynamics and the powers that are going on in the world. I, I, I'm really in the business world, so I, it's, to me it's a lot like in leadership and creating, but just also looking at society as a whole, I think there's something so important, but also, again, uh, like life would just be so much more colorful and fun and alive and not necessarily, you know, like beautiful and soft and nice, but just like real and alive if we would, uh, yeah, invite more, if, yeah, if more women would be in touch with this, this power. I think that's me. Well, I can I can go next unless you want to go, Raven. If you have a burning desire to, I'm happy for you, for you to go if you want if you would like. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, my journey to the feminine and especially to this kind of turn on feminine has been a long <laughs> journey. Because I started out, um, I grew up with two very competitive brothers. I was, um, yeah, it was always about politics. And, and um, I was very much also about, I, I wanted to change the world, not necessarily save it. But I was uh, like, I was changing. Um, uh, um, so I chose to work with men. And I was an entrepreneur in the tech world. And um, I actually thought women were, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really respect women. And I did not, could not uh, identify with the feminine at all. Uh, so I had a very, yeah, quite negative um, images of what the feminine was. And on myself as a woman, I kind of more was, yeah, I. I'm really a guy, even though I happen to have breasts and, and, you know, a pussy and like, so that was, um, 
and you know, I want I wanted to make a difference in the world and build companies and um, so um, yeah. So th there's a long journey here, but eventually, uh, after I ended up in the U.S. in California, um, had like kind of pretty big bankruptcy behind me in the tech world, and and so that kind of shattered a lot of my self images of of being this super entrepreneur, and. That was kind of the beginning. I started doing yoga. Um, I started meeting people who were telling who were telling me, "Well, you're not in your feminine at all." And I was like, "Hmm, what is that?" <laughs> so, so that was so. It's it's for me. It's really been like this journey of slowly discovering that there is actually a woman here, and it's she's feminine and she has a body that is feminine, and that's actually really good. So. So that was a whole, you know, I did the Burning Man thing and I, you know, it, it was a lot of discoveries and I, I've also been deeply spiritual and I've been um, in non-duality spaces uh, since I was a child. So that has kind of been a parallel development, but that was also kind of more in the masculine, like uh, really more in the vastness and the, the like the deep space. And so... But slowly, I, I and I moved to LA, and I kind of got into more of the goddess circles. But that was still, you know, that was without sexuality. And um, so, so this um, there is such a strong connection when women discover their sexuality, and um, and what happens also when you turn it off, because women can really turn it off in a way. At least that's my experience. And. Um, so I had, when I was in San Francisco, I had this huge sexual openings, but it was very disconnected. Uh, I was not in my heart. I was not really in my body. And then, uh, um, then it was only, you know, spiritual. So the shift came when I, um, came back to Sweden and then I met this German guy who was very much in his masculine. And that was the first really like hardcore masculine guy I had met who was also had a spiritual um we were in the same spiritual path and he um he woke me up to my sexuality but in a very deeply connected way and it was like holy shit like <laughs> what is this like uh so so that so my i have my gratitude to men like th this and I, I think there is a there's a guy in la who who, who he, he talks about awakening masculine leadership he talks about you know, uh, a woman can uh, fuck a man into his heart and a man can fuck a woman into her body. And I think there is a lot of wisdom in that. And that was very much how it was for me. And, I, and, and then I also shared this with another woman who had a similar experience. And we were like, holy crap, like this is so powerful. We are so empowered. And then she asked me, and she was in leadership circles, and she had taken courses with me, and she said, can't you create a course around this? I was like, sure, <laughs> I'll do that. And, and that's how this course came to be. And so it really was kind of born out of this meeting with a guy who was very much in his masculine, and which supported me to wake up to this. Um, yeah, and, and then I the more I started working with women and like holding this space where, where the sexuality, where sexuality is, is engaged and, and, but it's also with heart and there is this deeper presence. There is nothing more. What else can you want to do? In life? Like, this is so good to be. It's like, if I am going to be on this earthly plane, uh, you know, live out an existence here, I want to be turned on. I want to be close to, truth and my body and um this deep presence and um yeah so that's my uh, uh journey with the feminine and the masculine and so i'm very grateful for the work you are doing and i think it's very important so. mm. It's wonderful to hear both of your stories. Um, the masculine plays a role in my story too. Um, so I, I resonate a lot with that. Um, 
I think for me, it's interesting to think about how I wasn't already in my feminine, how this is a journey and kind of how all of us are in that position of, of aspiring towards some sort of experience of the polarities that feels um, rooted in some sort of deeper experience than perhaps what we saw uh, around us when we were growing up. Um, my mom was uh, a very like radical kind of feminist who very much embraced gender neutrality. Um, she told me when I was young about baby X, which was, you know, the kind of baby that was raised without a gender and told me about how she wanted to be a boy. And so I was like in the state as a young girl thinking that, you know, being a boy and being masculine was something that my, my mother kind of wanted me to be. Um, and that kind of set me up to, I mean, that's one story. I could have also been attracted to it, but I definitely valorized and was very attracted to like men in movies. I was like, oh, I want to be a man. I want to be like, I want to like be the guy who like, you know, saves this woman and like takes her on this like crazy journey where she discovers herself. You know, I identified with the masculine so strongly. And I even, it even showed up in my relationships with, with, with my friends in high school, you know, in, in middle school, I was like taking care of them and like playing the boyfriend role. Um, so I've, I've had this kind of aspect of my life of, of being in the masculine. I embraced uh, my father's trade of carpentry. I became a carpenter, he was building houses. Um, so I was like working in the kind of physical realm of masculinity. Um, I was also into philosophy and high abstractions and um, kind of sparring with the men. Like I, you know, my, my, my very feminine female friends wouldn't want to sit at dinner parties with me because I would be in these arguments with all the dudes and just be like, what are you doing? <laughs> why are you doing why are you doing this and they were like but I want to you know it's like so invigorating for me and I don't know exactly what happened it's interesting to think about it because a lot of it was actually um you know the pandemic and coming online and actually learning about Fanny and, and Louisa and like all of this stuff going on in Sweden around um kind of the, the women's movement and this reimagination of, of the feminine that I even realized con more consciously that I had not been thinking about what it meant to be a woman. I had not wanted to think of myself as a woman. I Feminism was like something con completely and totally abject to me. Um, I wasn't interested in it. I, I didn't want to be like one of the women who was only interested in, in, in being a woman. Um, and I think that it really started to show up for me, the importance of this conversation and my kind of strange tension with it when people started asking me to, to come on to the Stoa or to, to these different things and be like, can you talk about what it is, what it's like to be a woman in these spaces? And I was like, okay, <laughs> like, I guess I'll just do that. Um, and I guess through doing, being prompted into that path of self-reflection and really sitting with it and being much more open um, and not allowing myself to stigmatize the, my own experience as a woman um, started to kind of open things for me. Um, and then I also had a bunch of very personal experiences, including like psychedelic experiences where I like connected with um, my my mother and not like more recently with my grandmother and this kind of uh caring energy that i have within myself that i had basically been kept i had kept in exile um because i hadn't identified with it so in my experience it's been interesting to see how i had a limited perception of my own identity that had exiled the aspects of myself that to me would have been kind of associated with pink, you know, associated with the feminine. Um, and, and then I guess what really has brought this all together for me is um, I, I, I met a man and he is very, very dedicated to holding the feminine and growing into his masculinity in, in a way that is giving agency to 
my feminine power. And I think that this is, this was an extraordinary experience for me. I had never been invited to be in a relationship like that before. And the feeling of working on that polarity in relationship has shown me how much I had been attempting to hold both of those things in myself, both the masculine and the feminine, as a form in many ways of self-protection, of being able to navigate in the world, being able to succeed, um, being able to achieve. I had taken on uh, the feminine, the, the masculine ways of doing those things, the out, outwardly, and the feminine I had kept kind of hidden and it would come out in these like kind of sporadic, um, overwhelming, overwhelming, like intensely overwhelming ways. And in that sense, it became a chaotic and kind of, you know, Dionysian in the way that Owen was really describing <laughs> um, in his talk kind of energy. Um, so, I mean, my, I feel like my, my journey really is just beginning. I, I think that um, it's, it's been a really eye-opening experience. And I think that the way that I'm beginning with this, and I think that this is where I feel an affinity for the women here, is to me, this is not an ideological project. This is not about creating some kind of uh, framework or uh, being in, in connection with some sort of pre-existing uh, political endeavor. Um, although, you know, there are, there are those dimensions when you get to higher levels of abstractions, when you're talking about governments and populations and all of this stuff, but it's really sitting in with who we are now with men and women and, and opening ourselves up to, to what our experiences, are, to our experiences are in the present without all of this baggage of how we're supposed to see ourselves or the way that our identities have been constructed by the interface with pre-existing cultural inertia. And so in a way it's about this renewal um, and, and almost a kind of dying. I think one of the things that's been most crucial for me is um, just over ego death over and over and over again, just learning how to die, learning how to die, <laughs> learning how to die. Um, because it's, it's um, especially since my, my identity in terms of masculinity, I was holding on to it for its protection. And so letting it go was an act of, of, of opening up and being vulnerable. And I think that's where being held by the masculine has been so critical. Because there's someone there who's like, this is for your agency. I'm not holding you to any kind of expectations of how you need to be, but I am want to open you up into the world as a feminine leader as a feminine woman and that feminine energy is going to charge you and charge me as a man right and that participation um it's so like so juicy it's so exciting and it there's a there, it's thrilling there's a thrill to it um and it's it's a gift to be in in this kind of space in these spaces um, because, you know, I think I've had a lucky life. I think I've been very lucky with the men um, and the women that I've known. And, and even then, like this, the, the relation, the relationship that I'm in now is like, is exceptional. And it's showing me how much I have been carrying fear in me and had been using the masculine as a shield. Um, so those are some, those are some stories and some thoughts about it. Um, there's a lot, I know there's a lot more to go into, but maybe I'll hand it back to you, Owen, and we'll see where you want to take it. Oh, sure. That's um, amazing stuff. I think the thread that was coming up in all three of what you were saying um, that, yeah, that I'm interested to go into more is about this, this feminine leadership. So Fanny and Lovisi, you both spoke kind of, explicitly about being involved with with organizations with businesses while also thinking consciously about femininity but raven it's a bit more of like this relationship at the moment has allowed you to kind of feel this beginning say of feminine power of feminine leadership um yeah, yeah let's let's go into that feminine power leadership 
Yeah, I actually can, can I just take take the ball here just shortly. Um, um, I think Fanny will talk actually more about the, the the business world right now. I'm I'm very much focused on on empowering women to move into this and actually inviting sometimes men too. But I think there is a piece that is really important to to bring in also what you were talking about, Raven, like this about the masculine within us and how. That, that there is a way for women to really be in their power, uh, not that we don't need to be held by the masculine, that is such a beautiful gift. Um, but there is something about this, um, um, you can call it wildness. When a woman is in contact with her more wild side, it's kind of riveting and it's so juicy. Like, um, and, and that also for most women that needs to be discovered and you really need other women around you to, to, to see what that is, but, um, you can talk, you, you know, you can bring in more like, um, like the, um, uh, Jaguar or a Panther or, you know, that the kind of the big feminine animals, predators that are you know, they're pretty cool. They, they are very powerful and, and they go for what, you know, they're going for the hunt, but they, after that, they're just, you know, having fun and frolicking and, you know, it's like, but it's, it's like when you wake up to this power and you, you do need this pussy power, it's, it's almost impossible to feel this without, uh, so there is like a turning on to that. And yeah, we, I, I had one uh, event where men were invited to hold the space for women dancing. And so, you know, there was like different faces or different uh, acting out different um, archetypes, you know, very sensual and sexual. And but it wasn't until women, you know, were into their wild, you know, kind of almost collie kind of energy. And it was I like. It, the whole room was electrified and, and it was so much fun you know the women were growling <laughs> and the men were just standing there. it was like what the fuck is happening and afterwards it was like we were all crying because it was the beauty of being held by men and being that strong but also having that holding it it, it still touches me it was one of the most extraordinary experiences and I think that is so just as a segue before moving into the, the business world, that this is a really important part. When, when I talk about these three, like pleasure, power, and presence, this, the power aspect is really essential for women to own. So that, I just want to add that. You're muted. Honey. Yeah, it's muted. Um, yeah, kind of what what comes up in me, you know, when we start talking about the business world is to say, like, we're already talking about the business world, like, this is what is needed in the business world, like it's not, and I think that's also a very feminine um, way of looking at it, because for women, it's, it's so much feminine leadership is so much about being. Uh, it's not necessarily about like, you know, any like leadership tools or doing this or being strategy in that way or blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's, it's just like, if you, in any business context, put in a woman who is just like radiating this energy, like the room is going to change, like things are going to happen differently. And that is feminine leadership. Um, yeah. So just to say that, like, it's not, and, 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 you know, also for women, since it is about being, we can't differentiate about like how we are after work and how we are at work. We are just us. Uh, and, uh, and I think that is, you know, the masculine is a lot more um, kind of seeing things in polarities and seeing things in, in uh, and, and the feminine is just, it's, yeah, it's, it's nonlinear and it's, it's uh, yeah, it just is um so um uh yeah um i think that that's uh, i think that's like for me like the most important point to, to make about also um yeah speaking about business yeah i'm you know 
I'm just begin I feel like I'm just beginning to step into like a conscious understanding of my feminine power. I think I've had it already. At least people have reflected to me that that's something that I have and um, that it's it's a thing that does affect rooms, you know, it does affect what's happening around around me in the world and becoming a conscious wielder of this, I think is is very important. Um, especially because I think that there's an ethical component to it um, in terms of wielding your feminine power in a way that is um, in integrity and with oneself and and with those who are affected affected by it. Um, the way that I, I kind of conceive about this in, is, is in terms of, uh, right now it's in terms of a pair bond, right? But, a, you know, a heterosexual pair bond and, and how there's a kind of navigating in the world um, that arises when, when you're paired with someone and that there's different, you know, there's different ways of, of going through this process of integration of two different, you know, navigating beings. And in a highly individualistic culture, we've all learned our own ways of navigating and it can be quite difficult to, to, to synthesize and stitch ourselves together with another. And, and, and it's, it's a giving up process as well, because you can't, you can't just be yourselves together. There's also a kind of emergence of a relational dynamic and in, in a potential as a kind of horizon that, that arises that you, you might as well uh, learn what it is to engage in a kind of polarity of experience. Um, and this is where I, I feel um, kind of excited about the potential of polarity in relationship, because if you, you know, if, if, if my partner or whatever, he can deal with the spreadsheets and, you know, all the regimented stuff. <laughs> and what if I'm just being, right? But being in a way where I'm there and I'm seeing and I'm receiving the world and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking in all the social information and feeling all of the things that are coming in what what can be navigated how can we navigate together if that's what women and, and men are tapped into and they're inviting the polarity the specialization however you want to understand it um into their cooperative process and i mean this takes a kind of character development that i think is part of why we're all here working on this right it's like you can't come to the table and expect that it's going to be men and women are going to be the same. If you're like, oh, well, why doesn't that woman, why doesn't she have to fill out this country? It's like, if you expect to be treated the same, then you can't even get into this space. There's just, there's just no opportunity to even go there. Um, and it's, I mean, I think, and this would be another topic, but like, I'll just, I'll just make a comment that like, the, there's a kind of rivalry, there's a kind of um, competition between the sexes uh, that I think arises from this inability to understand uh, the, 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 the beauty of these differences uh, and the power that can come from embracing the, the, the aspect of difference that you embody, you embody fully, um, especially in relationship to another who has differentiated to be in this other polarity what can emerge out of that i think is like a kind of and maybe i think this is kind of what i intuit i mean it's like getting at this like if you could run a whole organization with this holy shit can you imagine what kind of navigation we could be doing how we could be serving this the project of like taking care of the world um, taking care of all of the entropy around us <laughs> um, that, that has been created by, I think, a kind of leadership that has not been in touch with the feminine for, for decades. They've been in touch with a lot of power, but they haven't been in touch with the feminine navigational capacity. Um, and that's where I'm, like, I'm very excited about that. And that's why I'm very excited about what these women are doing in, in, in specifically in business and, and um, with these powerful organizations of people who are oriented towards cooperating together towards some greater goal. What if you bring feminine to that? And the first place you can do that is in your, you know, in me, you know, where I'm doing it right now, because I'm not running a business, um, is in my relationship, in my relationships with men in my life. Um, and when they embrace that too, the, the potential is extraordinary and you do have to let go of what you have expected yourself to be 
because mm-hmm. you're facing a horizon of, un- of, of, of unknown. And any conception that you have about who you may be or who you ought to be is actually just a limitation. Um, and the being that emerges from, from the practice, I think, uh, and the embracing of a kind of unknown future, but a sense of trust and a sense of, uh, you know, being held by your own power, kind of like Louise was saying, I think is all you really need to do to take the journey. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I've really had some like truly amazing experiences, like business, ex- like yeah, at work with. So I, I, I co co led a team together with a man who's also doing men's work, and 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 what what I really like, yeah, what I really take with me from that experience is how how deeply vulnerable it is both for like feminine women and a masculine man to go step into that collaboration together. Because for me to fully let go of when everything in the business world is measured on masculine metrics. So like my whole performance as like, you know, being someone in the management team is completely measured in masculine metrics and, and completely letting go of that and just saying like, in our collaboration, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step into this feminine power and I can't be measured because then I'm not accessing it. So kind of, and then, uh, and then for my like, for, um, the man that I was collaborating with to, to like fully trust me in that and kind of hold that and to him to really meet me in my full feminine power as a man and then like yeah have that collaboration together it's just yeah it, it's difficult to put words on but it is I really think it's the most vulnerable thing both men and women can do like to be fully seen like that as a woman and to dare to let go of control and just hold space for that like thing to emerge that you're not in control of as a man like it's it's yeah but but what like the result like when you do it is like it's so much fun it's so so empowering and it's so effective like how we functioned as a team was like amazing uh, and like really hard like we had to have some really challenging this like discussions and again really vulnerable but uh, yeah just just having experienced like a small flavor of that like what that could be possible like if as you say like if a whole organization was run like that like the potential and also like as you say Raven of I mean if we're not deeply in touch with this kind of feminine source if that's not what the organization is serving then like what's the purpose of the organization like what that that's i mean that's how we create these just kind of cultural layers that are just empty and just like burn out or just these like machines just doing things and like what what's why there's no life there uh and that's you know and that's beyond you know like putting like an ideology of like we're a sustainable co- a company like you know we should we we're, we're an alive company in in service of the, of, of this feminine life force like that's that's uh, uh yeah mm-hmm. yeah fire that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> mm. well Owen, do you have another question for us <laughs> well i do but i was uh, i was gonna wait to see if anyone wanted to riff okay, okay. well well i i just adding also this the the you you were talking about kind of integrity raven or there is something about that and i think that's also why why i really emphasize also presence because again there is this uh, there's there is a maturation into this there's a maturation of the heart and and there's a maturation of um being able to be in the being space which again like when we are so versed in the word world of doing, it's it's a, such a shift in how we how we operate, and and we do need support in this because th- there are so few examples anywhere where where actually a being state can lead to a doing, uh, but it's it's from a completely different place. So um, yeah, just want to add that. Um, Oh, yeah, I, I think. Think. oh go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, what does that support look like? Um, 
well um if if i'm um uh, in order to to be in this place you you do need um at least someone taking on the role also of the masculine and and there is there is that um i think that's where we move into this beautiful uh collaboration and co-creation where where um the more you are in this there is a doing that can rise that that is rising from the being but it's it's um it's it's you can say it's also it's not a fragile place because it's actually very powerful but it's it's so not how the world again it's it's it's, it doesn't exist in in the way we know it so um yeah um I, i was thinking of a conversation we had the other day louisa about yeah um how yeah how like how what this support looks like and how important it is that that um it's like the paradox that i really think that kind of the masculine really is kind of in service of this feminine life force and i really love what you said raven about about um your uh, partner saying like i want to hold this space for you because it enlivens you and it enlivens me uh which i really think is true i really think that like men get so much you know purpose and power and like from holding space for the feminine and i really think it's so crucial that they're they're not they're doing it because they want to because they feel called to because they're they're there and they're present and they're in their bodies and they're they're in their hearts and the, and they're connected and that's where this like presence and maturity comes in so they're doing it um because it's just what is the most true for them as well so they're not doing it because i want to do this for this i mean it is it can be for but it has to also be true um because otherwise you know it's just you, you know you, you can feel it and it's not you know yeah it's not um yeah it's not true so it's like give when as a man when you feel called to give that support to say yes to it and also standing in integrity if you're not feeling called to not give that support um and of course you know in in a heartful way of saying no uh, but yeah um Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I I feel like it's we're in an interesting time so much of so much of the world that we're interacting with was built in like god what the last like 100 years and like that's been just an explosion of this masculine intelligence in the world and it's 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 embedded itself into machines that just repeat in these in these loops that just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and um to to navigate this massive continuously growing like <clears throat> cybernetic ship on an ocean we've forgotten about the ocean that mm-hmm. we're navigating on um as a civilization and it is women standing in their feminine that have a direct channel to the ocean and if you are invited as a man into this into this experience and i mean i think that there are telltale signs of it i mean i think what i've seen in men who are invited is a, there's a curiosity about women there's an understanding of them as being as being different but not in a way that makes them abject mm-hmm. not in the way as makes them gatekeepers of something that they that 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 a man feels entitled to or that he wants there's a kind of courageousness that that i think is necessary um and almost like a stepping into maybe kind of a kingly consciousness um of 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 being in a in a in a realm of being in a world of being in a room and you're like i am i am here to hold this room i'm here to be responsible for who is here for their well-being for their safety for for their curiosity for their openness and holding that space is an act of service not as an act of um social maneuvering or uh, attempting to control and I, i think that's where a lot of this comes in is like about enabling agency i mean i think uh, is it forest landry who says love is that which enables choice how terrifying is that how terrifying is it to love someone and for that love to be giving them the agency 
to do what is their life path, a life path that may take them away from you, a life path that may run against what you want for, for yourself from them. So it requires so much bravery and so much strength of heart um, and a kind of being in the present because you don't know what it will be like in the future. You're not playing a transactional game where, oh, I give this woman this thing now and then she's going to give me this later. Mm. It's, it's, it's holding what is <laughs> and mm. breathing it in, breathing it in letting it go and like it's like I'm clenching your jaw continuously you know um and I think that uh it's going to obviously it's like this is a whole new way of associating you know this is this is this is like and for this to scale like for Louisa to be talking about like doing this with with groups of people with whole communities of people and and it's it's it, and that that could be many communities of people the fact that this could spread but we have to start in these pockets um because this isn't common knowledge this is not common knowledge um and the the transition from one world into the next is 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 hard I mean, like um, have so many yucky things that I've had to like work through in order to get into this space um, from the old world um, and from the old way of being. And they still come up, you know, um, and I'm still reminded of it when I interact in the outside world. And so, but it's, it, it's, um, I think it is co a collaboration and I expect for any given woman who feels called that there is a, there is a man who feels called and it's a matter of listening and exploring and having generosity with each other and curiosity and um ultimately about being committed to your own experience and your own depth and your own courageousness and your own integrity because then if someone walks away from you because their path takes them somewhere else that's that doesn't harm you in the same way you haven't been stolen from you know it's it's just it's just another way for life to go um so yeah i, I think i think a lot of this is emerging <laughs> in short it's emerging we don't know what it is <laughs> amazing stuff right i want to open it up a little bit so if any of our guys um in the audience want to throw out a question or a thought or a reflection or anything else then um, then now is the time and i'm on my phone today because i left my charger in south london at my girlfriend's place so i've not got the visibility of all the stuff going on in the room so um either you can just unmute yourself yeah just unmute yourself if you've got something to say and be civil i trust you i could start if you don't mind oh you um Hi, Andrew. Yeah. yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big mouth, so I always <laughs> jump in here. So, anyway, um, well, I was thinking of a few things. I was thinking about your story, and I was thinking about how there seems to be a loss of femininity, which is followed by a re regaining of femininity, and it seems to be the same for men in the culture. So there's this sort of unconscious feminine, masculine in history, right? Which who are they're very polarized feminine and masculine and then there's this loss of gender in, in the postmodern era and then there's this rediscovery of the feminine and the masculine but that's not the same as the original thing it's like the zen thing mountains and rivers or mountains and rivers then they're not mountains and rivers and then there are mountains and rivers again but there's something different about the mountains and rivers you know at the at the next stage so, so I want I want to talk about that, and you talked about uncommon knowledge, and I thought that was interesting. And I thought it, it might have something to do with that. So, either one of you guys want to have anything to say? Can you say the exact question? Um... The question is so. The question is, what is the state now of masculine and feminine? What is the masculine and feminine we need to embody now? as opposed to the traditional masculine and feminine. And what's the difference? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like this is something that's like very much like the the ungenerous kind of outside takes on these kinds of communities. I think especially like a kind of postmodern person, maybe or or, or like postmodern caricature, uh, looks at something like this and is like, oh, this is like neo traditionalism. And like, it, you know, there's some sort of uh, attempt to uh, recreate gender norms, you know, normativity around gender. And, um, and I, I do think that there, that, that I, I've heard that critique, you know, I've heard it. Um, I, I think that it's out there. Um, however, I do think it is ungenerous. I think that what is happening here is much more of like what you're saying, which is like, it's it's a going inward into something that is present and just letting it come up into into the experience like making it legible to everyone who's who can get in touch with this experience and share begin to spill shared language so that we can talk about it and i think you know what louisa is doing is and is like it's not just shared language it's shared practice it's it's shared um experience that can get you into into the relational dynamics, into the stuff that's like, you know, oh, I mean, it's like what Owen was saying in his presentation about the Dionysian is like the music, right? It's, you can't see it, right? It's like this emerging masculine and feminine is like the music, mm-hmm. you know? If you can play, if you can tap into it, if you can find the instrument inside of yourself, if you can get into, into a, a jazz band and you can begin to riff, you can feel it. You can totally feel it and it emerges. And then afterwards you can, you can try and grasp that, you know, <laughs> what it is that's going on, but yeah. Oh, a really funny, can I just, like a really funny metaphor that comes up to me is kind of like, if you're, if you've been having sex with a person and then suddenly you start having this new, like amazing kind of sex, like it's not the time to like, what is this? what do we what do we call this what what did I do where did you push like how did I how do we recreate this so I'm kind of getting that like I think yeah I mean just like it was a funny thing that popped up into my mind but just like the the notion of that like it's yeah we like I don't think we I don't think it's time to kind of try to label and 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 you know um I mean there is there's a purpose for that but but now it's just yeah. Maybe that's a very masculine thing, right? To to mm. try to conceptualize something and yeah. say this is what it is, and, and, yeah. and something men can learn from women is to is to not do that. Um, and and also like it's so infected like that whole discussion. So it's just it's really really hard to go into that labeling and and to do that in a in a yeah. graceful way. But when women feel it, like I've never experienced a woman who's actually felt it go into some kind of um, not liking it, if that makes sense, or like saying that this is some, I don't know, Neo, whatever you said, Raven. Um, yeah, but Louisa, you, uh, I'm curious to hear what you were gonna say. Well, I think it's, I, I, do, I do think it's, uh, I, I immediately move into my thinking mind and I, and I leave my body when I heard your question. That's why I had to ask again, because I was kind of picking out. And, and uh, uh, I worked so hard <laughs> not to live there. <laughs> and, and, um, but I think there, there is one aspect that, that is so important that this really has to be initiated by women in this power this is not something that can come from men unfortunately you would you know it's 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 there is this um it, it's it's it is a shift in paradigm that when um it's from this place that women can invite men and and then it it becomes this beautiful meeting but um i work with so many women who um I mean, when you have started taking down the shields, it's very easy to move into some form of collapse or codependency, and and that doesn't create the the when the masculine is really, you know, in his power, it, it's it's um, the way it it's it's kind of women need to stand in this power, uh, at least that's my experience to be able to hold that masculine and then to, to actually to be able to to 
surrender without leaving herself. And, and it's, it's kind of, this is like complex and it's even has, you know, women's social nervous system, you know, being baked in estrogen from, from, you know, being in utero, um, you know, always wanting to kind of moving outwards, wanting to see where, you know, how can I support others? And, and this is a coming home. And, and that's why it's such an important, um, the invitation comes when a woman is in connection and then she's an attractor, uh, but in a very embodied in, in, and, 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 and has that presence. So, yeah, just wanted to add that. Thank you. Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Daniel, you're up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. My, well, my initial question was pretty much identical to Andrew, so I'll... <laughs> but I haven't, I have, I have more. Um, yeah, I, okay, so... I'm wondering, like, uh, I haven't been in men's circles for, for a very long time. And I, at first, I, I, I didn't think, you know, that I needed it or whatever. I, I didn't feel a need for being, uh, being in a men's circle. But when I entered a men's circle and when I went to the European men's gathering and all of that, I sort of discovered something um, that was, uh, that I knew was present. Uh, even before. So it, it wasn't like this totally new revelation. It was more of a, some sort of awakening of, of something that I knew existed. And so, and, and, and it feels like when the three of you talked, it feels like a similar thing. Uh, but I, I was wondering, was it like a completely new experience? Like, oh, this new true femininity, or, or was it like, was it familiar in, in, in some sense? Uh, yeah. for, for me, it was new. Um, I, had, I had not known. I mean, obviously, I, I could recognize aspect, but um, yeah, no, it was new to me. And I, I would say most of the women who come to my courses experience it also as new. Um, it, it feels like this is a kind of almost an evolutionary step. And, and hence we, we, there hasn't been a structure, there hasn't been a support to, to be in this place. So yeah, that would be my 10 cents. Yeah, for, for me to add on that, it was also, yeah it's kind of like i you know i've I'd had glimpses of things but really putting them yeah putting them all together and really more starting to live from a feminine place is completely new for me uh and and yeah it's really really changed and giving me access to life and relationships and being and experiencing this world in a way that I'd never experienced before um, and and it feels like the deepest homecoming I've ever felt mm. um, which is maybe the aspect of it not feeling new but uh, yeah I, I just feel and it re yeah, really touches me like I, I really feel like I'm coming home more and more and more the more I go into this practice. Yeah, and, and if I can just add, I mean, the way I often talk about this, it's, it, this is a spiritual or soul practice. And when, when you feel that, then, then it is homecoming. It is, um, that, that recognition is there. I think, I don't know, I don't know if any of you all have been kind of following Ian McGilchrist's work at all with like brain hemisphere stuff. But when I think about something feeling new now, I think about it kind of being like a left brain experience where like there's some sort of kind of constructed sense of reality that like um, finally gets 
you know, there's enough energy in the system that it, it's, it's, it's a limited perception, it's limited categories, it's kind of rigid way of understanding things gets like blown apart or gets in, you know, like melted or whatever it is that that experience is like. The qualia is actually, I think, very important. The melting of those structures is like that, like hyper salience experience where suddenly in a conscious way, you're like, whoa, like I'm having a totally new orientation. My capacity to navigate has completely shifted. And so then there's this kind of paradoxical state where it's like you're both in a new place because there's some part of your mind that's like having to adapt almost entirely like a new structure of, of legibility for making sense of your internal experience and the way that it's interfacing with the world at large. But then there's also this kind of like deep presence that's always been there that in, in fact has probably just been neglected um you know it hasn't been seen or hasn't been experienced because of a kind of obscuring of its nature um that has occurred from how how we've kind of been living inside of ourselves and um yeah i think for me i i and i really am just at the beginning of this journey um in terms of consciously stepping into the feminine but um it it, is, it has taken me back to, to childhood to being a little girl being a little girl with my dolls. That's something I've, I've felt that uh, memories that I didn't know that I had. So it feels like in a way I was intuitively connected to this kind of thing, this kind of presence when I was much, 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 much younger. Um, and, you know, my kind of the way that I had built my, my identity since then had shrunk or erased or kind of distorted that path of emergence, that path of, of experience in my life. And it took, it took, um, I mean, it took holding one of my mother's dolls when she was a little girl and also being in this place of, of being able to hold the, the, the presence that comes out of that kind of experience to, to see the gap you know, to see the gap. Right. I have a follow up, uh, but um, no, I'll, I'll just let Eskil ask the question instead. Do you feel the follow up, Daniel? Go. Yeah, I was okay. Um, well, uh, so why do you think that? That, that that you the three of you had to to well this is what's similar to Andrew's question uh, why do you think you had to go and find this what in the culture that we live in is is sort of um, what obstacles are there and uh, um, yeah what what what's what's like a concrete uh, what what or, or, or Maybe let's say this way is that like, what can we as men do to sort of uh, um, prepare that path for, for the women around us, like our girlfriends or wives or, or, or just friends? Well, if, if I start here, I, I think a huge part is women owning their sexuality. There is still so much trauma. There is so much uh, stigma. There's so much shame that, um, and I, I think there's a tantric teacher who said, uh, you can't be a powerful woman if you're afraid of your own pussy. And I think there is so much truth to that, that if you aren't, um, it, and it's, there is so much embodiment that needs to happen. And, and but again, there is so much fear and, sh and, and the shaming is, is huge. Um, so most women are not connected to their sexuality in that sense they can have sex but they are not connected and and so th there is a huge um shift that happens then and then the other piece is that for so many women there is also a strong correlation between sexual connection and spirituality because women can be very spiritual but then they leave their bodies so it's kind of like a dissociated experience. And there are tons of women in the new age kind of arena, but 
when you connect it with your sexuality, that's when that's a whole different ball game. And so that that is, um, um, yeah, those are at least my in my experience, um, yeah, that awakening needs to happen, and then also coming into also this the wildness. It's it's again not uh, accepted in society that women are can growl and and even though it's beautiful <laughs> growling um, it's like most women have never experienced it most men have never seen it or i mean they wouldn't know like so there so that needs to happen i think um and then it would be lovely for for men to be there to like yeah yeah hello yeah go <laughs> that would be wonderful to be held and supported in in that yeah yeah that, that's what was coming up I mean, like what I wanted to add to like answer your question like what can men do um yeah to really um yeah be ready for us <laughs> we're coming <laughs> but like and also and also you know um and 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 also but also under like um understand or or take in that you're that you're not in control of that process um that like it's it's not yeah it's not up to you it's up to your girlfriend for example I don't know if you have a girlfriend that was just but you know it's it's up to the women around you um but like yeah yes so so leaving letting her have her process uh and but also and you know being ready for when when she, when yeah when when she is ready to, to embrace that and feels the calls and, and embrace her sexuality to uh yeah to do yeah do what you guys can to like prepare yourself to to be able to start meeting women who really are in their power in their sexual power um because i think yeah again that's like a very um intimidating and vulnerable thing for a man to do um Wondering if I can jump in with a question now, so we so we'll just have time for. Uh, I'm I'm just putting my face on, so that we have time for for the last two here. Really good um, answer. So um, I want to start my question just with a little um, train. Oops, train of thoughts, uh, train of thought. So to begin with, I noticed that this uh, this meeting is more relaxed. It's relaxed in a different way. And I, I find myself thinking about uh, why that is so. And um, because at the same time, and this is touching on some of the things that you talked about, Raven, you mentioned some great words on courage that I know, and this is a similar, similar thing actually, that when I meet like a, a strong masculine man, I know that what that does to me, that, that pushes me to be, you know, to try really hard and do really well. And similarly, when I meet a really feminine woman, that that actually does a, a similar thing. I'm I'm like called to really do something, and those uh, I mean those two are interestingly similar. But then I'm just I'm and then I'm coming back to why this room today is so relaxed, and what I'm landing on is another word you, you said, Raven, music. I'm landing on that this meeting to me is a celebration. And that's why it's just like joyful smiles all the time. We're bringing something together and it's it, it incredibly generous. I think in your sharing, it's really generous. And Fanny, you especially were like super grateful from the beginning about us. And what we're really doing is just witnessing and, and listening to you. So I'm seeing that this is a celebration. And this comes then on, which is, what what do you see as now you're you're all working with women within the women's space we're working within the the men's space what do you see us actually doing because i see what we're doing now again celebratory joyful thing um so what how do you see us both as men but as men that was a past question but as, as men's work facilitators supporting you and vice versa if you think it makes sense that's the question Mm. 
something that comes up in me is just uh, silence is the answer. That's <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, but yeah, maybe along those lines of like just you asking the question feels so like that. That's that's the work. I mean that that is like it's it's men just standing there saying like how can I support you, and then waiting, and then seeing, yeah, how that support can happen. Um, yeah, uh, but then yeah, I mean as Louisa mentioned, we have been doing some work. We've been bringing in men um, to. Uh, yeah where their role has been to to hold space and to witness uh and it's for, to, for me it's been um some of the most uh yeah extraordinary experiences of my life um to yeah to be be fully seen uh, in my full power as a woman by a man is um uh, yeah i like i yeah i um it's, um, yeah, it's one of the most beautiful things I've experienced. Uh, and and I think that kind of, yeah, to me, it's like with women, I can, I can, I can be awakened and I, I grow this, this like power, but like with a man, it's like, it's, it's like, it comes out into the world. Like I feel, I feel like, like I'm, like I'm seen and I'm more here and I'm, I'm, it matters um, in, in the meeting with, with, uh, with the masculine yeah and and all all the women i worked with um i mean there is such a longing to also meet men in in this place because it's like not knowing how to really show up to dare to show up in that because it is vulnerable and it is new for most of us and so how how we do that and and that's maybe still to be seen but it's um yeah this this uh asking the question and uh, um holding the space and witnessing and appreciating uh the 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 that we that we are in that space is just so extraordinary and and um i think that's again why most both women and men <laughs> cry after this because it is we we are so not used to these arenas where where we get to be met and fed uh, by one another in in our polarities so it's very powerful and very beautiful mm. yeah i was i thought of something very similar <laughs> um I think what I thought of was the invitation. Like it was, and, and, and specifically for me, like it was men, it was, it, there was a lot of men. I mean, there were women too in my, in my journey, but men inviting me, my, me and men inviting me to speak on the feminine, men inviting me to step into my feminine experience, men reflecting to me, like the, the power that I already had in my femininity, um, holding space, being patient, um, working through and owning their own experience. That's huge. I mean, I think that there's a contrasting conversation to have about the state of masculinity and today and what it's like kind of in the common, in the commons of our society and, and why we have to go into these spaces um, to try and get in touch with what's present and let it emerge um and why why a, a space of just men and the space of just women is so important um because i think that both men and women have feelings of a lack of safety or envy or um frustration or they've had hard experiences um hang-ups and securities feelings that make it difficult for them to connect um with the other and i think that the unconscious aspects of that are very prevalent in in the kind of majority culture and we do have to take care of those things 
And we have, to, especially to really step into this kind of power because giving women agency is scary. It is a scary thing. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah oh, that, that's, that's really good. Thanks for all the responses. We're really doing the work, you know, in the separate space. That's also why I asked this question because I see all that courage is something we're building it in the men's groups. That's where we get brave so that we earn being able to come together in celebrations like this. Owen being the guy today that took that responsibility, right? So now well, we got to bring in people and do something together and do something great. Let's let's just, uh, yeah, you're the man of the hour, Owen. Let's, uh, let's just bring in Marty for, uh, for two minutes. Quick fire, yeah. line of speed. Okay, well, I'm, I'm what you say, I scale quiet because Corona hit me a bit. So that's my quietness. Um, thank you uh, for your uh, inspirational talks, talks uh, you ladies. Um, and I guess it was Lovisa who said like uh, that a woman can, should be ready to take the man's power. And what I notice when um, I'm, I'm making love with my uh, with my wife that I can create as much space as I'm able, and she's filling it up with all her, her, her creativity. And the the more space I make, the more she's filling it up. I've never had the experience that she it is too much for her. Does it mean that I'm not ready to to make it even bigger or is there something else that that there is that she can handle it all? Or I, I was confused by that the woman should be able to meet all the masculinity. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think that's what I said. Uh, and if I said so, I, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I. I don't think so. I, I mean, what you're describing sounds amazing. And that, yeah. that's exactly what it is like when when a woman uh, is in her power and you can you keep expanding the space so she can she can expand her power, but you keep holding it and you keep expanding it. I think that sounds beautiful and amazing. And yeah. yeah. OK, OK, well, yeah, I, I didn't understand it, but then probably it's. Yeah, just to add short, short, shortly to that, I think um, what is kind of intimidating for women is to be seen like that. Mm -hmm. To be seen in my power uh, is not uh, is it takes a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. So to to be uh, yeah, to be mm -hmm. offered that much masculinity and receive it and say yes to it and let myself take up that all that space, that is the courage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Thank you for your addition. Thanks. Right. Oh, awesome. you want to say two words? I'm going to jump back in. Yeah, because we're at the bottom of the hour. Um, do you know what? I'm going to be a bit naughty. And if can everybody stay on for two minutes more, just so I can ask each of these uh, lovely ladies to give us a few final thoughts or reflections or anything else. You don't have to. But if there's anything else that wants to be said, now is the time. Yeah, I think for me, I, I just want to share again what I what I shared to you, Eskilano, in the beginning that I feel it feels so precious to be invited into this space um, by you guys. Uh, it's um, yeah, it, it feels really, really uh, precious and I'm really grateful. Uh, and yeah, I feel just by being invited and being here, like it's really, uh, I'm getting tired, my words are not here, uh, but um, yeah, I wish I could, I wish I could kind of put the feeling that I have in here and just like go like this so you can see it, but I can't do that. <laughs> so just, yeah, hopefully you can just feel into where I am. So I can't really formulate right now, but yeah, just wanna say thank you. And looking forward to more.
Mm. Yeah, I'm also feeling really grateful to be here and to be in this space of um, in this meeting, in, in this meeting together. And I saw what you wrote, Andrew, uh, you love women. <laughs> and, 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 or that you wrote we. <laughs> and I, I think that is, and, and we love men. <laughs> so we love you. And, and that it's, it's, so, it's so nourishing. And it's so, yeah, this about being invited. And I'm also looking forward to more opportunities for this. And it's also, we need one another. I think that is such a deep, um, um, yeah, it's, it's such a deep knowing that we, we cannot do it on our own. We, we can explore on our own and, and anchor ourselves on our own, but we do need one another. And it's, this is such a beautiful beginning. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, this is something really wonderful. Uh, I, I'm just feeling uh, invited and um, I'm excited for what we're, what we're doing, what we're endeavoring to try to do and the kind of people that we're um, letting ourselves become through this through this process of engaging with the presence of, of the masculine and the feminine um, it's it's truly it's extraordinary um, for for men to take on this 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 responsibility and and to open themselves up to the feminine and it's it's certainly a um, I think it's easy it, it, it's easy to underestimate how important it is for everything else. I think it's um, the generator function of what is a, an emerging cultural shift. Um, I, 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 I genuinely believe that. Um, and the reasons why are not as important as the feeling that it's true. And taking up the call and, and doing the work and um, inviting us to be here and it's just it's just wonderful and hopefully we can do this in in an embodied way you know and um, that you can do this with your with your wives your, your, your girlfriends your, your mothers your sisters you can hold them um, and bring them into into their own femininity and um, that's that's what I would want for, for everyone so thank you thank you all so much for holding this space amazing well raven louisa fanny you're brilliant you're beautiful um and i'm gonna do some voodoo sex magic and try and attract camille paglia to come and give us her lesbian brilliance 